Well, here we are. Christmas is just a few days away at this point. And like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, uh, we lament, we had hoped. We had hoped that by now we would have had this pandemic under control and we would be able to gather together in one large group for worship and that it would finally be safe to do so. We had hoped that by now, with Christmas coming up, we'd be able to celebrate that day with our families and with our friends, those who love us and those whom we love the most. We had hoped to be back to something close to or resembling normal, hopefully even better than the normal we used to know. But unfortunately, what we've hoped hasn't come to pass, has it? And like we've had to do for the last 11 months, it's been 11 months, we will be worshiping apart from each other, separated through distance, even though we are united in thought and prayer and in a shared viewing of our worship together. And now would certainly be an odd time for the angel Gabriel to arrive and say something like, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Those are the words that Gabriel says to Mary when he first announces God's plan to her. I might be just as perplexed or confused or scared as young Mary when she first heard those words more than 2,000 years ago. Words that began the announcement that God was about to do something new and that the child she was going to conceive and bear would be holy and be called the Son of God. And I can't imagine that it would have been very easy for Mary to trust those words, to believe what Gabriel had told her, that her son Jesus would be great, would be called Son of the Most High, would inherit the authority and the privilege of his ancestor David, who would reign over the house of Jacob, whose kingdom would have no end. Indeed, the birth of the Christ marked this and many other new things. It meant the coming of God's mercy physically into the world in the flesh and blood. It meant that God was indeed stronger than despair and oppression and evil. It meant the end of the rule of the proud and the powerful and the removal of those powerful people from their positions of power. It meant the raising up of those who had been crushed under the weight and feet of tyranny. It meant the feeding of the hungry who had been denied food by their economic situation and the taking of excess away from the rich who had hoarded it. It meant rescue for those who had suffered too long at the hands of those who hated them without cause. It meant peace in a world that just as much 2,000 years ago as today is obsessed with the fetish of war. It meant that the promises that God had made to God's people were not forgotten and were indeed being kept. Second only to the resurrection of our Lord, the message of the nativity of our Lord is one that I so desperately need right now. And maybe you do too. Christmas, especially this year, is a complicated season and festival for Christians. The message that we hear all around us, that we're inundated with, that we get constantly from Christmas music and movies that begin as early as September, for crying out loud, is a message that says, if you're not happy during this time, something's wrong with you. A message that says you won't be loved if you don't buy this gift or that gift 
or that gift for the people you care about. A message that says, if you can't be with your friends and family like you always have been, then the holidays are ruined. Or a message that says, this year, this Christmas will be the worst Christmas ever. But I invite you to listen again. More than ever, in some of our lifetimes at least, the Christmas message rings true in the ears of those who hear it. A message of redemption from the ownership of evil and callous lack of concern for the neighbor that has taken a grip on our communities this past year. A message of hope for the coming of the end of our current isolation and misery. A message of God's rededication to the cause and the fight for justice, fighting against those who would keep it from those God loves. A message of how powerful it is when human beings do actually stop and take care of one another. A message of how even in this isolation, God is with us. Emmanuel, that's what it means, God with us. And not just in some abstract, nebulous way, not just in some intellectual way or something that we feel to be true, something that's just truthy, but in a very real and truly present way, really here with us, in the same house, in the same room, on the same couch, in the flesh and blood of the Holy Communion, and in the movement, the stirring of the wind of the Spirit that we can feel on our arms and on our faces. This Christmas, we need this message. And this Christmas, personally, I need you to know that I love you. Being separated from you, not being able to see your faces and to shake your hands and to give you hugs and to have your children running up and down the aisles of this sanctuary. I miss that. Being separated from you is one of the hardest experiences I have ever gone through in ministry. So I need, I want you to know that I love you and I miss you. And I need you to know that God loves you too. It's such a simple thing to say, and I know we've said it and we've heard it hundreds, if not thousands of times in our lives, but it's true. Even in the time of COVID-19, God loves you. The birth of the Christ child that we celebrate in just a few days was just the beginning of a new way of experiencing that love. And just as the Christ came once before, bringing with him the joy of mercy and freedom and redemption and justice and bellies full of food and peace from war. Christmas this year is a time when we remember that Christ will come again to do it all over again. So I guess, if you put it that way, maybe this Christmas won't be so bad after all. That's the hope that I have. It's the hope that I have for me and my family. And it's the hope that I have for you and yours. Merry Christmas, my beloveds. For God is with you. <laughs>